As on the eve of the final game of the World Cup, unfortunately, we're not going to the round 16, but it's been an unbelievable experience. What have you made of your time following the girls this World Cup? Uh, it's been it's been pretty good. Like it's my first time down in Australia. Good excuse to come down. Unlucky in the first two games. Could have got a draw against the Aussies. Could have beaten Canada on another day. It's just a shame there's nothing to play for on our side going into this third game. But look, there's been great support for the first two games. Let's hope it continues tomorrow night. Yeah, plus one. I mean, the, the girls have been unbelievable. Um, we're in a very, very tough group, to say the least. We played two of the top teams. We, we put it right up against them. Uh, you know, we deserved at least a point, probably in two games. A bit of, uh, bit of luck here and there. We probably would have got it. But, I mean, for the Irish here, I'm living here a few years at this stage. It's, we're so proud of the girls, you know, coming down here and seeing all the, all the fans here today. Sydney, Perth, you know, we've really come out and supported them. And they, they deserve every little bit of it, you know. And fingers crossed tomorrow we'll go out with a bit of a bang, you know. You mentioned there, obviously, narrowly to lose to two top, top teams. Does that fill you up with hope going forward for this team and what they can potentially achieve at tournaments in the future? Absolutely. Like, I mean, it's, uh, look, as we, as we mentioned earlier, it was always going to be tough to get out of this group. But it does give us hope for the future. Like, I mean, to lose only 1-0 to the hosts and one of the top teams in the world and to lose 2-1 to the Olympic champions, look, they're not the worst results in the world. I mean, if we got hockeyed 4, 5, 6 in both games, you'd kind of be thinking, geez, we've still got a bit way to go, but we're not a million miles away. So uh, for the next qualification campaign, Let's hope it kicks on in there and hopefully the first of many tournaments to come for this team because I think it's a young team and there's definitely a couple more tournaments in them, absolutely. So you're backing them to get to Switzerland next for the Euros? We got, oh, sorry. You're backing them to get to Switzerland for the Euros next? Yeah, look, I mean, they're going to learn so much from this. This, this is the, the, the top level you can play at. And, you know, as you said already, like, we put up against two of the top teams in the world, let alone Europe. We haven't even got to that sort of stage of the Euros yet, but fingers crossed, the experience they're going to get out of this. Like, you know, we lost two, but I think, you know, being Irish is the way you lose and, and you can be proud of. I know it's not always great to, to lose, don't get me wrong, but we were both in, in Athens last, last month to see uh, the Benz team play. And again, it's the way you lose. The, the, the girls are putting some serious fight. And again, we were just so unlucky not to get at least a point. Um, and again, something to be really proud of. And again, we, we just build on that. And fingers crossed, we get a result tomorrow and we, we build on that for the Euros. And this is just hopefully the start of it. It's so good to see, you know, all the kids coming out, all the, the, the younger kids coming out, especially around Australia. And, and at home as well, it's it's a real buzz of, I don't know, it's a little bit, I'd imagine, what like Italian 90 and the Euro, the Euro 88 was like, but, but for the girls and, you know, again, fingers crossed, this is just a start. How much do you think this team is going to inspire the next generation of girls and really push the forward uh, the future of women's football in Ireland? I think it's going to be massive. Like, I'm, I remember when I was playing football, like, I mean, I think girls' teams, I think they could play till they were 13 or 14, then they had to stop. And it does, depending where you were in the country, there was no avenue to play. Like you would have had to go to probably Dublin to play. I mean, you see now there's girls teams popping up all over the country at grassroots level. And with this, like, I mean, as I said, it happened with Italian 90 and US 94. It just inspires the next generation. And hopefully this inspires the next generation of girls and girls playing football. Now, you know what? If they can get to the World Cup, why can't, why can't I make it? So I think it's, I think it's going to be, it's, Hopefully the start of a, of a, of a golden generation for, uh, for women's football in Ireland. And finally, lads, just to really put it home, how proud are you of this team and what they've achieved? Oh, so proud, you know, like, I mean, Katie's a warrior. Like, she's, she's like what Roy Keane was back in the day. She's a leader. And it's not just Katie, but she inspires everybody and the whole team as well. But couldn't be more proud, you know, we really stuck it to the Aussies. Like, I mean, I didn't think we were even going to get that close of a lot of Australian friends. They were absolutely fuming about how, how rough we were. You know, that just says it all. You know, we, we love that fight. We always loved that fight, you know, being Irish. So, uh, yeah, super proud. And, and, and as I said, you know, fingers crossed for the Euros. This is going to set us up nicely and a lot more to come from this team. There certainly is. Lads, thanks very much for your time. No Appreciate you. Thank you.